Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're like podcasters. <laughs> We're trying. This originated as a tipsy idea. Drunk, not tipsy. Drunk idea. Hammered. I was fucking hammered. <laughs> and we've really followed through. Yeah. And also, there was a little bit of a mix-up in our recording studio mm-hmm. um, booking. We're like- in the Ken's Mojo Dojo Casa house. Which she doesn't understand because she hasn't seen Barbie. So you can see the confusion on her face. Yeah. That's exactly where we are right now. Should be in the Barbie dream house. I feel like we're in a weird room in a really old, gross, smelly, rich guy's house. So Ken's Mojo Dojo Casa house. Oh, that sounds cooler. Get in touch with pop culture, Emma. Go see a movie or two. I think our juxtaposition is healthy. Juxtaposition. <laughs> Chloe's hammered. I'm um, not. Yes, that was are. a crazy way to say Ju- juxtaposition. Juxtaposition. It's two words. It's not juxta. Juxt. But that's how I say opposition. I say opposition. Wait, so is it just the ju- New York accent? Yeah, juxtaposition. No, no, no. <laughs> juxtaposition. Okay, so today we are talking about best friend breakups because dun, dun, dun. they are way worse than boyfriend breakups i've unfortunately had a lot so far which has been like really hard for me to swallow because you can't help but think like you're the common denominator and you blame yourself i'm like well you guys are all still friends but no one's friends with me anymore so am i the problem <laughs> it's me hi. hi i'm the problem it's me she's a swifty now uh, she that was a taylor it. swift quote so i've had of the significant ones i've had one Two, three, four, five, five, five where it's been like falling out since I was 18. I probably had about the same, not since I was 18 though. I had a best friend that was there when I was born. She was supposed to be like my sister, like grew up like baby memories together. And then I was 13 and I moved to LA and I started booking things. She stopped being my friend out of the blue. So we all know why that happened. Don't be peanut butter and jelly people. That really hurt my, that was my first heartbreak. She was like my sister. I'm an only child, right? So right. friends that are close to me feel like siblings. Totally. Out of the blue, no contact. And her mom too, that was like a second mom to me. That really sucked. And that opened my eyes to friendship breakup. So yeah. I was like, oof, where is the playlist for this? Yeah, why isn't there a playlist for this? Let's Fix make a that. playlist. We, I will make a playlist Okay. You. Yeah. My first one, same thing. It was like we got back from summer vacation it was high school, it was the first day of senior year, and she just didn't speak to me. And I don't even think we ever really addressed it, so I don't know why. So there's always just been this, like, question mark with her. And then the same thing actually happened to me. My senior year of college, she was truly, like, my sister also. We went through a lot together. We met during study abroad. She was my rock. We had gotten into a tiff. Hindsight, it, it's pretty immature, but whatever I was immature. I was 20, 20 21. It was my birthday weekend, and... I had a birthday party, then I wanted to ring in my birthday with my two best friends. She said she couldn't come, that she was going to dinner with her friends, and that she didn't want to go out, and she wasn't feeling well, whatever. I was like, can I come out with you and your friends? I just invited them to my birthday party. Like, can I I come? It's my birthday. She said no. And I was like, okay. This is your best friend? Yeah. I woke up the next morning on my birthday on Instagram. She had posted stories at 4 o'clock in the morning of all of them out. And so Shady. Yeah, so I got really pissed, and I called her out, but I yelled. I, I think I, like, really screamed um (laughs) so you know we got into this fight we didn't talk for a little bit but then we made up and then a couple months went by we were fine and then she just stopped talking to me and she is very much in the public eye now it's really hard that i have to see her all the fucking time on the internet she just got married and that truly fucked me up that's a problem with living in la and also new york that was new york Girls and boys alike, a lot of the ex-friends or ex-boyfriends are going to be on billboards and be on top chart. Now it's going to be us. <sighs> Bitches. We're coming. We're coming for, for you. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. So there was never any explanation of why. No, there wasn't an explanation. And it was worse. Like, yeah. no closure. No closure. And it, I, I was always just like, questioning, what did I do wrong? Why wasn't I a good friend? And... I've had to do like a lot of soul searching because of all of this over the years, really just like sitting with my own thoughts and trying to work through it myself because it's it's not an easy topic to talk about with your friends, especially if they're like new friends, because you don't really want to seem like 
you are a bad person or like you did something wrong to your friends in the past like why did they leave you i'm more embarrassed about my friend breakups than my boyfriend breakups it hurts my ego a lot more because you know they, they were someone who, who was in my life platonically and chose to leave it female friendships are so much deeper not to say that romantic relationships aren't but there's a certain level of closeness oh, totally. and deepness that you can reach platonically yeah. between women that is hard to replicate when there's no sex involved a relationship in general if it grows strong it's fucking rock solid and then when it all of a sudden falls out from underneath you you're left with this hole right it's someone you go to for advice about your relationship about your family your other friends your work it's someone that you confide in it's someone that you have the best memories with you really become soulmates on a friend-to-friend level and then yeah there is no closure like there would be in a romantic relationship nine times out of ten it's just weird drop off where you don't talk anymore But I personally no longer allow that. I just confronted one of my closest friends. Last night, I sent a text and I was like, so are we just letting this fizzle out, LOL? (laughs) So passive aggressive. (laughs) Are we going to talk about it? (laughs) It's not even passive, though. It's just like confrontational in a sense of, I'm too old for us to have been friends for 10 years and then drift away. Yeah. You're going to tell me what your problem is and I'm going to tell you what my problem is. We're gonna work, and work either we're going to work it out or we're going to be like, that makes sense, bye. Yeah. But the whole ghosting each other when you have a deep platonic friendship yeah. is so strange no you can't ghost friends that's the most fucked up thing in the world it's really fucked up yeah and it's not easy to make friends as an adult to make no. new friends it takes a lot of time that we don't fucking have in my like soul searching and, and me trying to figure out what was going on i do take responsibility for a lot of it there was no closure so i actually don't know why that friend stopped being friends with me i came up with reasons in my mind and i blamed it on myself mm. when i was younger it's like i had these really intense personality traits and characteristics about me in relationships and friendships whatever it may be and i didn't really understand them at the time and it was almost like i wasn't in the driver's seat and i had all these crazy things going on in my head and they weren't crazy it was just intense i loved so fiercely yeah. all my friends all my boyfriends, and I still do love very fiercely, but back then I didn't really know how to use my personality traits as a tool. And instead I let it kind of run wild without me having any control over it. So I would have these blow up moments where I would fight with my friends and I thought that that was okay. I held expectations for my friends that I held for myself, which is not healthy. I'm a giver. I do Mm. things for people. I like to give gifts i like to throw parties for them and when i was younger i would expect it back and then i would get so disappointed and so let down and i wasn't receiving it back that i would get mad at them for it i didn't realize at the time that that's unacceptable you can't hold people to certain expectations and then get mad at them for not fulfilling what you want that's not who they are i expected everyone to be like me it put me into this awful situation where i was self-sabotaging these relationships so now i'm still that person i've got i've Learn to control everything and use it as my superpower rather than flaws. And I don't hold people to these expectations anymore. If I'm going to do something, I just do it selflessly. And I know nine times out of ten, I'm not going to get it back. I threw a birthday party for my friend the other day. I never expect her to do that for me ever. I truly just did it because I wanted to and I just have to take it at face value. She appreciated it and it was great. You're not always going to get what you put in back. It's just not the case. You can't change who someone is. You can't decide who they're going to be or how much effort they're going to put in. I think devil's advocate to that, though, is that everybody has their own love language and their own attachment style, and ours is probably similar. It's gift-giving and acts of service and our thoughtfulness and our ability to go above and beyond for someone shows that we care. And while appreciation for that matters i'll speak for myself i feel valued and loved with little bits of thoughtfulness and it doesn't have to be an entire birthday party it could be i saw this fucking meme and i thought of you i bought you this for your house because i thought of you or you don't speak to your dad and it's father's day and i'm calling you to make sure you're okay like there are simple ways to check in to show your friends that you love them that i do expect in return that if I'm not getting, I'm going to start to drift away and sort of reevaluate how much of the grass I'm watering for something that's just not fucking blooming. Yeah, totally. I feel like it's so dark to say, but I've just stopped expecting anything from anyone else because when I do, I tend to get disappointed and it's so sad. But now I'm just really careful about who I choose to be in my life and I treat them with the utmost respect and I love them and I just – 
hope for the best. I would never be friends with someone that would disrespect me or be mean to me or anything like that. I just don't have space for that in my life anymore. So at what point are we able to look at this has happened so many times so we're the problem or we have outgrown people and we've accepted that (laughs) and it's okay to move on because personally every friendship breakup that I've had since the one that I mentioned when I was a kid has been that I have grown at a faster rate and it hasn't sat well with the friend groups that I was in. Yeah. And so I've distanced myself and I have blossomed every time. I've become the best version of myself. A lot of those times I don't have a best friend by my side. I am solo and that sucks and it's sad and it's lonely and I always crave best friends and I miss them. But I never regret understanding I don't fit in with my high school friend group anymore. It's time to be the one who steps away. But you're this lone wolf walking away. I mean, it's a red flag when people are still in their same high school friend group. That means that none of you have grown. Nobody's grown up. You're all still with the high school catty drama. That persists. And it's strange. We are not of age of of like glee drama anymore. Grow up. I don't understand that. I have no... No tolerance, zero tolerance for drama with my friends. I choose them very carefully. I will say I am friends with a lot of people. Like I am acquaintances. Acquaint, yeah. Yeah, like people see me out and we say hi and like, you know, maybe I'll get drinks with people. But who is in my circle? Who do I call? Do I pick up the phone? Who's there for me? On a bad day. That is far and few between. I have like five, four. But that's normal? I don't think that's healthy. We need to normalize it because a lot of people are like, Oh, why yeah. don't I have enough friends? Oh, I have 18 weddings this year. It's like, no, nah, I had like one or two. And that's because, fine. Yeah, and it's like you need to not look at it as why don't people love me? Why don't people want to hang out with me? And look, all friendship separations don't need to be this hostile no. breakup. You don't have to hate someone for not knowing how to love you. Mm. <laughs> anybody for not knowing how to love me a lot of people do a lot of people don't have the capacity to understand that and they instead turn it into hate because it's easier to hate and it's easier to To let go that way yeah but you have to remember everybody this is their first time doing life they're doing their best we're on a fucking fiery rock rock. (laughs) yeah through space time and space yeah and you're this little ant and it's like it's okay if your timelines don't align anymore it's okay to separate from those friends I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. But what I do have a problem with is the pettiness, the subtweets. Yeah. And thankfully, I haven't experienced that for a long time. But it is kind of persistent in the same girl group that I used to be a part of. I know that I'm still consistently talked about in that group. And yeah. it's upsetting a little. I try not to think about it or care. But it hurts. Shit talking is so 2010. Does anyone have anything else to talk about? Do you not have lives? I just hate it when girls bring girls down. Women. Get a job. Bring women down. Stay away from her. It just blows my mind. Why are we not supporting people? Why isn't everyone the best friends you meet in the bathroom out at a club? Because those girls, those are the real ones. Those are the real girls. I could say 10 nice things about every girl I used to be best friends with and nothing bad. I feel no urge to say anything bad about anybody anymore. I'm like, well, some of my best friend breakups were unfair to me. I had two that truly, to my core, upset me to this day. One of them, she was my best, 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 best friend. Hindsight, she kind of treated me like shit. When we stopped being friends, there was a lot of people in my life that were like, she wasn't a good friend to you. Why are you upset? I was like, what do, you, what do you mean? And they had a laundry list of things. But basically what happened was I had a full-time job. She had just gone off and like started her own company. I also always wanted to do that. She knew that. So I started taking on side clients when I had a full-time job. And this one company approached me because the founder is very good friends with my sister. My family all invested in the company. I was the go-to person. Asks me to run their social media. I said, no, I'm really busy with my job. But here's someone who could do it, who was my best friend. She started doing it. I don't think she was doing a very good job, apparently. They kind of were coming to me and asking me for advice of what to do. I was just a sounding board, basically, for them. One day, they called me up, and they said that they had let her go because she did some shady stuff, whatever. And they asked me to take over. 
I said yes. I was trying to start my own company. It was a lot of money for me and I didn't have the luxury to say no. So I call her up to tell her, to let her know, like I'm sorry that they let you go. They came to me and Which I'm Which is also really mature of you because I feel like a lot of people in that position would feel overwhelmed by what happened and they would just avoid it and hope that the other person wouldn't know. It says a lot about the fact that you picked up your phone and you called her to let her know. Well, tell that to her because she was like, why didn't you ask me first? And I was like, because you're not my mother and I wouldn't even ask her. I don't need to ask you anything. And at first I was defending myself and I was like, what you're doing to me is wrong. I needed to do this. You know, she was engaged, set for life kind of a thing. I'm scraping by. I was making no money and needed to do this. She started being like, I can never look at you the same. We are no longer friends. Then I started groveling, which I kick myself for doing because she didn't deserve that. I'm so sorry and blah, blah, blah. I should have asked you. You're right. Again, shouldn't have done that, but I did. And... She has not talked to me since. I get if both people are struggling in their career and trying to make it, like there's hard feelings. Or if I stole it. Here's a great example. You and I have worked with the same client. I brought you on board. I've been working with them for years. Due to the SVB collapse, I got let go and you stayed with them. And I have not held that against (laughs) you. I've not given it two shits. I've been like, are you okay over there? In fact, we went and got brunch at Sadell's and here we are. And here we are. I've (laughs) genuinely been curious on if she's okay because her workload has probably tripled. (laughs) I think it's a perspective and it's also a matter of being secure in what you're able to do yourself. Obviously, this is a slightly different scenario. I just think there's a lot of silly reasons that friendships come to a halt. Realistically, I think she was looking for a reason already to cut me off and it teed it up for her. I really wish that Friendship breakups were as communicative with as much closure as romantic relationships. Yeah, when there's two females in the situation, you know how this feels. Why would you do that to someone? Like, why wouldn't you just be cognizant of their feelings? If you don't have empathy, like, you're just going to stomp all over this person who's been there for you and always been at your side. You're just going to stomp all over their heart. Just because it's not a boyfriend doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. No, it hurts worse. Yeah, and then you just go through life and, like, you have to find a new best friend. Like, I don't know. It sucks and it's so hard. Empathy is something that I am overflowing with. It's my own detriment, honestly. I have too much empathy. I walk down the street and I'll see a homeless man and I go – for the next 20 minutes, I'm thinking, how the fuck did this guy get here? I put myself in his shoes. I'm wondering, you know, what happened with his mom? What what happened with his parents? And when it comes to people that we love and we trust and we talk to every day who just turn on us, it's such a – yeah strange thing to process most of my friendship breakups have happened because i've worked for or friends have worked for me and it's been terrible one of my best friends the second one that i've ever considered a sister i worked with for many years and i helped develop a very popular game all about getting to know people on a deeper level and being empathetic and being um self-aware is she a little hypocritical (laughs) Working there felt like the biggest mindfuck of my life because I was so confused about how we could be asking each other these deep questions about how we feel but not be talking to each other about this deep disconnect that we feel. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I left. The difference between what I was feeling and what we were saying to our audience was killing me. So did she stop being friends with you because you left? We just drifted apart and we've tried to reconcile many times and I hope one day we will. But I think we have two very different POVs. I still love her to death. I would still fight for her. I feel nothing but love toward her. But I think what happened was very sad. Yeah, A lot of it is tied up in working together. There's another great friend that I met that worked for me the other way around. And I had done nothing but given her job after job and opportunity after opportunity. She was able to move across country because of opportunities that I gave her. And then the second that she had a chance to help me, she stabbed me in the back. It can be really tricky when you work with someone. And it made me nervous for you and I to start this podcast. Like Not even just this. I was nervous to ask you to work for that client because I had been told time and time again that working with a friend ends in regret. Actually, two of my best friends in the world, three of my best friends, I made through work. And we're still friends. A lot of times when you become friends with someone at work, it's because you're trauma bonding. Because you are both dealing with the same shitty boss. You're both going through this experience together. Have you ever hired anyone that you're friends with first? No. Okay, it's just me. Yeah, no, I know not to do that. <laughs> One of those things. It's it's really hard, but... I mean, I commend you. 
it's hard for me because creatively everyone that I love who's really good at what they do, I'm like, I want to ha- pay you for what you do. It's really hard for me to trust someone and be like, yeah, I want this person to represent me. This is more of a problem that I had like years ago. It's not really something I have now because I have now selectively chosen my friends and they're all mature and, and great and I would definitely – you know, throw their hat into any ring. Yeah. But back then I was very wary of it because that person's now going to represent me and re- reflect me. And great segue, when you choose your friends, you're choosing how you are represented and how you are. In any room. Yeah, in any room. Professional or not. Like whoever yeah. you associate yourself with, like that is who you are. That's what people are going to remember. There's a quote that's something along the lines of, you are the average of your five closest friends. Oh, interesting. Which I have honestly found to be accurate. I found it to be accurate upon myself, my family, my other friends, and the guys that I'm dating. If you look at the five people that they are closest to, it does kind of boil down to what they're interested in, what their goals are, where they want to be, what they fuck around with. It's pretty accurate. That's really interesting. I guess my question that makes me think of is, is that referring to your girl group, your friend group, or is it just like your five closest friends? I've always spread myself pretty thin yeah, across same. friends. I'm always the added one onto other people's friends friend groups because I have a best friend that's in there. I've never been a girl that's like, oh, my girlfriends and it's always the same people. I almost like choose my friends that I bring out based on the scenario and who fits best. I'll be invited somewhere and they're like, bring a friend. I will look at what we're doing, who we're going to be with, and then I'll say, okay, of all my friends, who will fit in the best with this group? Who won't be awkward who will be down to do anything even if we don't have a plan who will be able to hold conversation because we're all going to be at a dinner table you know things like that i want everyone to be happy that's like the host in me it's like i want everyone in the room to feel comfortable and be like all great together not to say that i don't think my friends are all amazing and some would thrive in certain situations where other ones wouldn't that's a whole statement on its own too right you have friends that Maybe they're not your best, closest friends that you'd call when you're going through the worst time of your life, but they're good friends to party with. They're good friends to have dinner with. That's what's helped me the most in my adult friendships. I know who my friends are. I know who I want to call when I have a long night out of the box. I know who I want to call when I go to dinner. Right, and I think that's what we've learned by losing friends. It's like you also can't put everything on one friend. We've talked about this with just regular romantic relationships you put everything on one person if that person walks out what are you going to do what now where are you going to be left you have to have a support group and they all should serve different purposes and not to say that like you need to be selfish and these people should be doing something for you and it's transactional that's not the case at all you have the privilege of choosing your friends as an adult when you're in high school you're in the same class you're in the same grade like you are forced to be with each other as an adult you're not forced to be with anyone you can choose and say you are a great person i want you in my life and then you can say you're a shitty person get the fuck out of my life what you just said is so important yeah I think especially going off of one of the last episodes we did, which was talking about family and choosing your own family. It's so important to have in your life fulfilling, loving friendships, but it's really difficult to materialize as an adult because you're working, you're busy. You don't want a coworker as a best friend, ideally, right? How do you go out of your way to make new friendships? I usually meet my friends through other friends. That's generally how I meet them. Or I tend to pick up a lot of friends when I'm dating someone. Are they his friends? They were like their friends' girlfriends. Okay, well, that's like like the girlfriend medium. Yes, the girlfriends all bonded together. And then slowly, one by one, we all started breaking up with them. And then now the (laughs) girls are all just left together. And it's so great. So, I mean, usually mine's by acquaintances. Oddly enough, I've been making a lot of my best friends on bachelorette parties recently. I'm kind of a friend thief. I've never been on a bachelorette because my friends are not married. So what else? Like, what are the other? (laughs) You're like, where do I go? I made a new friend in a thrift store in Paris, and we just met up, and she's so fucking cool, and I love her. Okay, you know what? Actually, I I have a tip. I have a a little piece of advice. That's a perfect example. What you need to do is have a list in your phone of people you said that you would meet up with. When you have a night where you're bored and you have nothing to do, go to that list and call up one of those people. Don't always go with the same people that you always hang out with when you have a night that's free just go down that list because let's say that girl you guys were probably like let's meet up in the city you never want to be the person that is the one that's always like oh yeah let's get drinks and then you don't because that's everyone these days so you have to hold yourself accountable and make the effort and make that's how you make friends 
That's when the best things happen, when you're spontaneous, when you that just is go. When the best things happen. And like the most unexpected nights are always the most fun. So you go down that list and you go until you find someone that's not busy. That's your homework, team. I want everyone to start a list in their phone. When you bump into that friend that you used to work with four years ago and you go, let's get drinks, because that's what everyone fucking says, write it down in your phone and follow the fuck up. Speak of, Emma and I have committed to having an unhinged evening. So We're just going to go throw the hinges off, throw caution to the wind, do some things to get some content to make you guys laugh and embarrass ourselves. It's all for you. Great song. Is that Paula Abdul? Anyways, on that note. You tell Emma and I any suggestions that you have during our night out because we're willing and able to do anything a little crazy, a little unhinged, and a little weird. Give us some dares. Just to preface, we've been out together all night, maybe once or twice so many years ago and not even all night. Yeah, So, so we've actually never done this. I think I left early that night too. Yeah, and so did so, I. And my teeth fell out that night, which we still haven't doubled story into. For another day. We don't even know what we're doing for next episode yet, so. We're improving. So you're going to have to wait to find out, but it'll be launching next Friday. So be there or be square. Bye. Bye.